we'll get into the message. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God today. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to stand behind this sacred desk, God, and, and do our best, God, to proclaim the gospel. Lord, I pray for forgiveness of sin in front of this congregation of people. I pray, God, you cleanse me, Lord, in my heart. Lord, I pray that you'd use me for thy glory this day. I pray the Spirit of God, Lord, would move up and down these aisles and God around behind this pulpit. Lord, I pray the Spirit of the living God, Lord, would touch our hearts today. And God, may we leave this place, God, with a determination in our heart that we're going to serve you and do you will. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In chapter number 8 of the book of Acts, number, uh, verse number 1, this is all introduction. And Saul was consenting unto his death, the death of Stephen. Now the title of our message today for Brother Frank's Amen. Uh, you send for your mind so he'll have something to put on the website. From Saul the sinner to Paul the preacher. That's my title of my message. From Saul the sinner to Paul the preacher. And Saul was consenting unto his death. In other words, Paul was proud to be a part of watching the death of Stephen. You look at that back in chapter number 7 and we'll, you'll find out how that Stephen was stoned to death because he refused he refused not to preach the gospel. He was going to preach the gospel. He had just delivered a blistering message to the Pharisees about, about the Lord Jesus Christ from his history from Abraham to Christ and he had just blistered them with the word of God and they were angry with him and they gnashed on him with their teeth and they stoned Stephen to death. And here was a man named Saul uh, that as he stood there he was consenting out of his death. He, see, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. He could not have people put to death, but he could have them put in prison. So he, he liked the fact that Stephen was being stoned to death. So he was consenting to his death. And at that time, the, uh, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women and committing them into prison. A man, he come in, he had no regard for age. He had no regard for male or female. But if you name the name of Christ and this man Saul was around, you going to jail. You were going to prison. He hated the church. He hated uh, the people of God. And he was just one of the... Uh, most wicked villains we would cause him, call him today against Christianity that ever walked. Now I want you to get in your mind right now uh, a road, a long dusty road, okay? I've been over to the Middle East and those roads that are not paved are long and dusty. Many of them straight and, and narrow. And uh, as he was walking along that long dusty road, if you look in, on this road, if it's traveling east to west, if you look toward the west, wherever it is, You'll see Saul. Here comes Saul. Now what was he doing? Saul had consented to the death or the martyr of, of Stephen. Uh, Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. He was, uh, he was full of, of uh, preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was stoned. And as, as all of this came to death, together, we find out about Stephen that he was full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. But now begins the journey of Saul as we have saw him in his time, in his younger days, probably about 30 years old or so, we see him in his younger days having been, uh, you know, uh, having been of the tribe of Judah, uh, having been a man that was educated by Gamaliel, uh, a doctor of the law, Gamaliel. And as he was, had all his for, formal education, man, he'd been to the, all the finest schools concerning the law. He knew the law. He knew ever jot and tittle of the law and as he uh, came about his business he began to hate those that were that were uh, preached the gospel that Jesus fulfilled the law and so we see this man on his on his road he is coming down the road of Damascus and we know about this man Saul that he persecuted Christians and he came as he persecuted Christians he would go into the house and he said you love Jesus Christ 
come on, boy, you're coming with me. And he'd drag him off, and he'd drag him down the road. Don't you back talk me, and he'd have him bat and beaten, and he'd put him in jail. You can go back and sit down. <laughs> Don't laugh, you may be next. But can you imagine going into someone's house? I'm not going to get you, Liz. And can you imagine going into somebody's house and regardless of their age, regardless if they were male or female, regardless of if they were a teenager, he hated him. He hated him. He said, I am going. I am going to take you to prison. You don't name the name of Christ around me. He's nothing. He's not real. And he, as you can't imagine how he hated Christians. You say, are we, talk, are we talking about the same man here? We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. But he despised Christianity. Why? Because he was devout as a Pharisee. He was a devout Pharisee. I mean, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. And I mean, he, he was just up there. He knew everything and he knew him, himself. He thought to be better than everybody else. Very educated man. Probably very well off financially. He was a tent maker by trade. And uh, as, as Saul went about his business, every day he woke up, I hate Christians, I'm going to get me one today. And throughout the day, he wrecked havoc. The Bible says he wrecked havoc in the church. Every little meeting that gathered together, if he heard of a, of a, of a backroom prayer meeting going on, he'd rush in there, he'd grab them, don't you be doing that, don't you be naming the name of Christ, don't you be praying to him, and he'd grab them up and he'd, he'd, ta- he'd haul them off to prison. Like I say, he did not have the authority to have them put to death, but he could put them in prison where they were beaten and where they were uh, all kinds of torture placed on them. Why? Because these people had heard the truth of the gospel, they'd accepted Christ as their Savior, and they were being persecuted for their faith. He's coming down the road. Saul's coming down the road. This is the way he's coming. He's breathing out slaughter and threatenings. He's got in his hand a handful of summons a handful of letters. He'd went before the high priest and said, I know where a bunch of Christians are. I need to get them today. They're wrecking, wrecking havoc. They're tearing, up, they're tearing up our religion. They're causing men to turn from their religion and women to turn from their religion and they're turning toward Christ. Amen. That, that'd be a whole lot of good today if a lot of people turn from religion and turn to Christ. Amen. Give up this mess. Thank you, son. Amen. Give up this mess of, of religion and, uh, you know, and just turn to Christ. But anyway, as he breathing out slaughter and threatenings and all manner of hate, you can just imagine it excluding from him when he come out around the Christian again. He'd say, oh, I've got you today. I've got a summons here in my hand. I've got a letter in my hand that says that Last night, you and a bunch of others that I've got their names right here were down in, in, uh, in uh, somebody's house and you all down there and somebody was preaching about Jesus. And maybe it was Stephen that days before. I heard, I heard when Stephen was around that, you see, you see what happened to Stephen. See, he got stoned to death for what he believed. And I remember being told that you all were with Stephen when he was preaching a cottage prayer meeting and you were with Stephen and you all were amen in him, you were praising the Lord for what he was saying and you were believing that, I've got you now, I've got witnesses against you, come on, you're going to jail. A little young and walked by him, oh no, oh no, you ain't getting by and he grabbed him up and he'd take him to jail. Everybody's scooting way over in your seat and getting your heads down. Don't worry, I ain't hurting nobody. But now think about it. Can you imagine anyone being that belligerent of Christianity and that hateful against Christianity? I'll tell you something, friend. They're in the world just as bad today as as Saul was on his road to Damascus. There are those out there today that if it wasn't for the laws that we still have enforced in this land would come in here this morning and, and, uh, you know, and either kill us or drag us off to prison And listen, we are being persecuted and we don't even have the sense to know it. Amen. The world don't like you. 
There's a lot of souls in this world that do not like you. And could they throw me in jail this morning for preaching the gospel? And I'm going to tell you something. It may come the day when just exactly that happens, but God helped me to stand firm in the faith and stand firm on the Word of God. And no matter what happens, help me to stay true to God. But there's those today that just soon throw you in jail or have you beheaded or, or and uh, hey, listen, this Muslim crowd, they don't like, don't listen to what this modern news day tells us that, Hey, listen, if they all believe out of the same Koran, I don't trust none of them. Amen. I'll probably get some flack from that. But let me say it again. If they all believe the same Koran, I don't trust any of them. Amen. Because they demand the death of Christians. And there's those out there today that would just grab you up and take you down the road and, and uh, stick your head on a stake somewhere. That was Saul. That was Saul. That was the man Saul. Now, have you got a picture in your head today about Saul? How what he was, how he was, and who he was, and mean as a snake, and, and uh, you know, I mean mean as a rattlesnake. Hateful as he could be. Now, I've got way ahead of myself, so I'll get through quicker. Amen. But he was a doctor of the law. He was a tent maker by trade. He was a Pharisee. He was a Roman citizen. He was a persecutor of Christians. He was sent to Damascus with letters of, of summons, of, of warrants for the arrest of believers. And, and he hated, chapter number 1 and verse number 2, he hated Christians. And Saul was consenting unto his death, the death of Stephen. And at that time there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering to every house, hailing men and women, and committing them to prison. Therefore they were scattered abroad, went everywhere preaching the word. Now what happened? This wasn't at all what Saul wanted to take place. He thought, I'm going to get them all in, and I'm going to do away with I'm going, as Barney Five says, nip it in the bud. He was a one-man mission to kill Christianity. I mean, he'd just wipe it out if he could. The devil's always tried to wipe out the church, but guess what? He ain't succeeded yet, and he ain't going to succeed. Amen. I'm a member of the body of Christ, and nothing the devil or hell can do about it. And listen, what it did was just stir people up even more. They persecuted Stephen, and he just stirred him up. He just preached that much the harder. Amen. He just preached that much the truer and that much the, the, the firmer on the Word of God. And what did it do to these people? They scattered. Okay. Paul's trying to get us. Let's just all scatter about. Then he can't get us all. Run for the hills. So they all scattered out and they all went to telling about Jesus. That's how the gospel spread, Brother Brian. That's how the gospel spread when we go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's what they did to their known world. That's where they went. They went out everywhere. They were scattered everywhere and telling about Jesus. And these little fires that we would call them today were just popping up everywhere. Little churches getting together, prayer meetings coming together, and God's people getting stronger and stronger. And there was Paul wrecking havoc in the church, trying his best, but all it was doing was scattering them. And they were going out and telling more and more about this man named Jesus. <clears throat> then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those uh, things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing and the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many and were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. That's what happens when the gospel is spread. That's what happens when Jesus comes along, and when you find him, that's what happens. Great joy is in the city. Great joy. Hey, Saul's still trying to persecute the church, but the gospel is spreading, and the gospel is growing greater and greater. Now, in chapter number 9, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if any be found of this way, what way? The way of Christ. Uh, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Here comes Paul. Or there goes Paul. Here comes Saul. And when after this, we'll see Paul going away. We find a, a place in that highway where... Paul, Saul's life was drastically changed for all eternity. 
And here we find him breathing. I just, oh, I'm going to get him. Oh, I'm going to get him today. I can't stand him. They, they kept me awake last night thinking about him. I can't stand him. And he got in the road to Damascus, and guess what happened to him? See, he didn't know when he set out that day that he was going to be, that he was going to fall under the, under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God. So what happened to them? He's breathing out threatenings and slanting. He's bound for Jerusalem. And he fell to the earth. And verse number 3, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? See, he was, he was against God's people, but who he was ultimately fighting against was Jesus Christ. And it, why, why persecutest thou me? Listen to what he said. And, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? Oh, he knew. He knew who it was. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished under the convicted power of the Spirit of God, he already realized who he was. He realized what he was doing was wrong. And when the Holy Ghost of light, when the Holy Ghost of, uh, shines that light upon you, then, friend, you understood right then that what you were doing was wrong. You understood right then that you were lost without God. And that's where Saul was coming. He was headed down the road. And certainly there was a light shined upon him. And he fell on his down and his knees under the convicting power of the Spirit of God and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? There comes Saul. And there goes Paul. From that point in time, he was drastically changed forever. A friend, when you got saved, if you're saved by God's grace today, when you got saved, your life was changed drastically forever. Your eternal future was determined that day from hell to heaven when you got saved by the grace of God. Now, a lot of people have had some kind of experience, but they've had, never had a conversion. Paul got a genuine conversion. Now, the Bible still continues to call him Saul until on over in chapter number 13 when his name is changed to Paul. But we see Paul coming down the road and he's changed by the miraculous grace of God. We see that he was saved on the road to Damascus. We see in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16 that not only did God save him, but God called him to preach the word of God. Can you imagine Saul? The man that had persecuted the church, the man that had done everything he could to do to, to terrorize Christians. You're talking about terrorists. He was one, man. I mean, he'd do anything he could to terrorize God. And then here he is, God's calling him to preach. You say, friend, I've been bad. I can't do nothing for God. If God can use a man like Saul, he can use you. Amen. I've had people tell me, preacher, I'm just, I've just been too mean. I've just done too many bad things for God to save me. If he can save a sinner like Paul, surely, friend, he can save you. Amen. And he can do something with your life. So here we find him being called to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was fervent about persecuting the church. But we see that he was also very fervent in his preaching. We see that he was sent out to the Gentiles. He was a Jew, but he was sent out to the Gentiles. He was a Roman citizen, but God sent him to the, to the Gentiles. Why? Oh, my friend, I'm glad God sent him to the Gentiles, aren't you? Because you and I are exactly that. We're Gentiles today, and we're saved by the grace of God. But Paul himself, on the road to Damascus, when he was changed, he said, buddy, he said, I've given my life to the devil so far. I've spent 30 years of my life, and I've been persecuting the church. God, forgive me. I'm going to give my life to you, God. You use me for your glory. Under the Lord, would we have some people today that say, God, I'm giving my rest of my life to you. God, you use me for your glory. I'll give up earthly fame. I'll give up my earthly toys. God, use me for your glory that I might preach the gospel, that I might spread the name of the Lord Jesus Christ wherever I can, whatever I can. God, help me. Amen. And I say that about myself. God, help me that I be as fervent. Amen. We're serving the Lord as Paul was. And I imagine, I can just imagine in my mind exactly what he started doing. Started preaching. Now, there were some things went on in his life that, you know, he was, uh, he was 
uh, you know, uh, came to by, forget his name, but he came to him and found him praying, and he told him what he should do, and, and he, when he got started, friend, he got started. Now, when I got started, I got started kind of slow. I didn't understand a lot of things, Brother Brian. I didn't, there were some things I just didn't understand, and I got kind of a slow start. But I'll tell you something, when I got it all lined up, when I got my sights where it ought to be, when I got to thinking how I ought to think, amen, friend, God help me. I want to go for God, amen. I want to serve the Lord. I want to do what he wants me to do. God help us. And that's what Paul said, I'm going to do for you, Lord, all that I can do. I can do. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And if I could go out on my own under the influence of the devil and persecute Christians, surely I can go for the Lord and I can preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ who fulfilled the law. I can preach him and I can preach him high and lifted up I can preach his sacrificial uh, his sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary and I can tell others that they might see the light that I saw that they might hear the truth that I know and that I might be able to impart it into them that they might receive Christ as their Savior Amen so buddy here goes Paul and he's preaching the gospel all must be born again you must be born again as John said you must repent and be born again will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to the Philippian jailer he said to him what must I do to be saved he said to that Philippian jailer believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house and guess what he got saved by God's grace said the first thing Paul went to when he went into a new town, he said he went down to the city jail. Look where he's going to be spending the night. Because that's usually what happened to him. He'd go in preaching the gospel. Some other Pharisee would come drag him off like he'd been drug off and throw him into prison. Paul was beaten. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. All for the name of Christ. He walked, but he went on serving the Lord. So I'm just going to keep on. I'm just going to preach to my dying day. I'm just going to preach the gospel. And he forgot, He said, forget any of those things which are behind. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. For the prize of the high calling. He said, I'm forgetting all that mess I used to be involved in. I'm forgetting all those days when I didn't serve God. I'm forgetting all those days when I wrecked havoc in the church. He said, I'm setting my sights on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking to the goal and I'm headed for that finish line just as hard as I can go. I want to finish and I want to finish well. And guess what? He finished well. I know Paul wasn't perfect. But I know, friend, by his, by his teaching and by his preaching in the Scripture that he did the best that he could. To, to spread abroad the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a Savior. What a Lord we have. What a preacher Paul was. Again, he was in prison for his preaching and then he came before King Agrippa. I've been to that site where King Agrippa was, where he stood before King Agrippa. And in where he stood, there was a, uh, there was a, a chain that come up out of, the, out of the floor. Underneath, there was a chain that come up underneath. And they bring Paul in before Agrippa. He came in before Agrippa, and he was chained down here. And Agrippa, he was talking to Agrippa, and he was telling him, King Agrippa, if you'll believe on Jesus Christ, you can be saved. King Agrippa, I used to be like you are. I used to be just like you. But now Jesus got a hold of me, and I'm saved by the grace of God. And old King Agrippa, if you trust Jesus, he'll save you, and he'll make you what, he'll make you what he will by the grace, by his grace. And he'd have to lean back over because those chains were pulling him down. And King Agrippa had saved something else. And Paul stand up the best he could, lifting those weights from underneath. And he said, oh, King Agrippa, won't you trust the Lord? He died on the cross of Calvary for you. He gave his life that you might have eternal life. The law's good, but Christ fulfilled the law. Every jot and every tittle. You don't have to live under the law anymore. Hallelujah. You can live under grace. Amen. And he said that, and he'd turn loose and go back down. He was couldn't lift the weight anymore. He talked to King Agrippa so much. King Agrippa looked up and his King Agrippa looked up and said, Paul, almost you persuadeth me to be a Christian. Almost. But he died and went to hell, almost persuaded. See what was going on in King Agrippa's mind, man, I'll have to be I'll have to give up being king. I'll have to give up all my luxuries. Sounds real good. 
He's got something going with that. I believe he just might be right, but I'm not willing to give up everything that I might be saved by the grace of God. Friend, I'll tell you something. When I got saved, I was a little boy. I didn't give up nothing. I, hallelujah, I gained everything though. Amen. Yeah, man, there's people God's dealing with it. Tell them now, if you, if, you get, if you get saved, you're going to have to go and, and, and uh, give up your drinking. Well, how bad would that be? You're going to have to go and give up your drugs. Well, how bad is that going to be? Uh, you're going to have to quit going to, uh, going to parties and going to bars and, and doing these things. Well, how bad would that be? Amen. Give it all up. You ain't never had no fun, amen, until you got saved by the grace of God. Amen. Listen, I have a good time in life. If you don't believe, you hang around me for a little while. Amen. I don't believe Christians ought to walk around with, oh, I'm saved. Amen. Boy, ain't it good to be saved. Ain't it good to be a Christian. Well, sure it is, but that ain't the way you want somebody else to look at you and say, man, there's a Christian. He's happy. What's wrong with him? Something wrong with him? Even other Christians will look at you if you're happy and say, boy, you're worldly. Hey, something wrong with you. If you can be that happy and be a Christian, hey, they just ain't got what I've got. Hey, Amen. They ain't feeling what I'm a feeling because the Jesus in your heart has stirred joy in your soul. Hey, Amen. I'm glad to be saved by the grace of God. And Paul said, I'm glad to be saved by the grace of God. King Agrippa, if you'll just believe, then you too can be saved by the grace of God. And Paul said, I count it all joy. Hey, Amen. And friend, we ought to count it all joy to name the name of Christ. Here comes Saul, but there goes Paul. He put fervently into the rest of his life preaching the gospel to every creature and he wrote 14, God used him to write 14 books of the New Testament. You tell me God can't use you, amen. If he can use a man like Saul, surely, friend, he can use a man like me. I, God helped me to be dedicated to his service. We got a lot going on in life. Everybody in here has got a lot going on. You got a lot going on away from the church. I've got a public job to deal with, and believe me, that ain't always easy. I've got to deal with people. I've got one faithful that I know of that's real faithful to, to God and to the things of God that works for me. She's here this morning, but I've got eight more that just don't care. Amen. If they're saved, they just don't care. But I want to tell you something today, my friend. I'm glad, amen, that in the midst of everything, I'd still be a Christian. Amen. we got a lot to deal with, but amen. God is greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. And friend, today, if I can serve the Lord and you can serve the Lord, we ain't no telling us what God can do with us. He preaches the word. And the last thing I want to say about him, he was faithful. When God got a hold of him, he was faithful. Man, whatever he done, he done it with all diligence and with all zeal when he preached the word of God we got it when he you know got an opportunity he was faithful to God if he got listen he might not have been preaching that night but somebody wanted him to come down to visit one of their cottage prayer meetings guess what Paul might not have got to preach but he sure did wouldn't go down there and say amen amen say I preach that in anybody but no it ain't but it, you just imagine in your heart friend how faithful are you to God how faithful are you to him? Are you, are you so concerned and worried about the things of life that sometimes you're not faithful to God? Amen. You'll be better off if you're just faithful to God. Be faithful to him. God will be faithful to you. Which road are you on? I hope everybody in here is saved, but if you're, if you're still... If you're still on that road to Damascus, amen, today would be the day to get saved by the grace of God. But if you're on that road to Damascus and you're headed the way Paul is, amen, you ought to be grateful to God that you can say, Lord, help me. God, help me. I want to be like Paul. I want to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go, Father, till you come back because, Lord, I know you're coming soon. And God, help me to be faithful till you come. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. Blessed, I pray, and Lord, I pray that you'd stir a zeal within in us God that we may be faithful no matter what God that we be faithful to you and serve you and do your will all the days of our life in Jesus name amen while every head's bowed no one looking around I'm through this morning amen I